and the multiple uh, rates have still been a subject of uh, debate. Well, joining us from our Buja studio is a macroeconomic policy analyst, Professor Ken Ife. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Morning, Professor. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, uh, when the CBN started these interventions uh, in, in February or so, there were concerns of sustainability. Some questioned whether uh, the CBN actually has the firepower in its arsenal uh, to sustain these interventions. Uh, what's your take now? $5 billion uh, so far injected into the system. Is it a success story? I think in, in a way, you will have to recognize that we have moved away from the worst case scenario in, in this recession. And that CBN is holding on the fire. And, is, um, and we can keep faith with CBN's approach. The reason is this. Your commentator said quite rightly that the key to all this is to have a globally competitive economy. And we are, we are already being assimilated into the global economy. And there's no country in the world that can allow its currency to float unmitigated. Look at China, as strong as that economy is, with $3.7 trillion uh, reserve. They suffered a hit of $1 trillion last year on, uh, on attack on, on, their, on their currency. And even as it has all that productive capacity. Now in Nigeria, we, ha we, have a very, we have an economy that is not globally competitive. We just have a monocultural economy of oil and gas selling at, at a market determined rate, globally market determined rate. So allowing a free flow that will obviously hurt this economy uh, will not answer the questions. We need to build our human capacity, invest in our human capacity development. We have to invest substantially in the exploitation of our mineral and natural resources and then develop our productive capacity to become globally competitive. Then in that, in that circumstance, our export revenue will match our import revenue. So you can see a balance. But at the moment, you don't have that balance at all. You don't have that balance. The, the whole situation has deteriorated to a point where CBN is grappling with just around 1 billion revenue a month to a demand on it of over $4.6 billion. You can throw caution to the wind. And then secondly, a a CBN is now working within the framework of a new plan, which is called the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. So it is now a player. It's not alone. So you, it, 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 CBN needs a policy space to be able to play as, as an actor in the, in the whole thing. So it's just one of the actors. And its role is clearly defined in that plan to, to make sure that it is supporting, it is maintaining a, a diversified economy, and you see that from the various interventions, to make sure that the financial system stability is kept intact, and you can see how it's fighting in this area, and then also to make sure that some of those areas that are suffering, because we don't have a perfect market. Okay, let me, let me give you an example. You have a market where other economies are doing everything they can subsidizing their products to invade your market. So it's no longer just about sending in substandard goods. These are deliberate action to undermine your own economy. Already it's an economy that is not competitive, but there are designs to undermine the economy. And I've given you some examples of, you know, where EU is spending 75 billion euro subsidizing agriculture, which is our primary uh, uh, economy. And then you're saying we're going to sit down and wait? Of course we have to fight. You have to fight to support the diversification agenda. You have to fight to protect infant industries. You have to fight to protect the hemorrhage on, on government revenue. And because that revenue hemorrhage is going on and government projected revenue is down, we have a very low tax base of 6%. All our partners in, in the whole of Africa are between 15 to 24%. It is a very dire situation for the country. So I understand the ideal situation is let us have a freely floating currency, yes where market determines. But that is a perfect market. We are far from a perfect market. It's, you know, take MSME finance. Totally disadvantaged. They can get it. 
and yet, you know, <laughs> they need it to diversify Prof. and to produce. Uh, they can get access to that money. All right, the Professor. Very high. Yes. Professor, you, you, you've made us understand that uh, it, will, it will not be desirable to allow the Naira to float. But since the Naira now depends on crude oil price, international price volatility, mm. if the price goes down further on the international market, would it not create more problems? You, you, because you, you started by saying that we are, we, we've passed the worst case scenario mm. in this recession. Wouldn't that plunge the country back into where we're coming, coming out from? No, the, the recovery, there is absolutely recovery going on as we speak. But that recovery is very fragile, very, very fragile. One is predicated on the slight recovery on the price of oil and the production levels. And there is volatility on the price of oil. There is, there are, there's also issues around the production levels. As you know, OPEC is capping down on us, and we, we have to oblige. So all those are why it's projected 2.5 million barrels a, a day may not be now, may not happen now, because they are, they are clamping. And America uh, shale oil producers are coming back with, with fury and undermining the whole OPEC regime. So we can't, we can't throw caution to the wind. We need this policy space. The CBN needs the policy space right now to continue to nurture the diversification agenda, which all other actors are keening into. Saw the announcements a week ago of six big people, uh, companies coming into the solid mineral. That is good news. Of course, Dangote Company is in there. Then you've seen what is going on in agriculture. A absolutely encouraging, with 2 million metric tons of more rice coming in. And then you could see more. Uh, so, but we need the space. We just need the space to, to allow those to gel so that we can increase our volume of exports uh, to, to get the revenue. And also, government needs help uh, in mobilizing revenue. Uh, diversification uh, is, is a long-term uh, project. Now, with, with the Forex reserves at $31.22 billion right now, and the volatility in the price of crude oil seems to have uh, settled somewhat, Niger Delta, there seems to be peace there. Uh, this seems to be giving uh, the CBN uh, some level of confidence that uh, investor confidence will follow suit with all of this uh, you know, going on right now. And so it, it can continue to defend the Naira. Or is it the dollar that's even defending, as some have asked? <laughs> I'm not too sure, Professor Ken, if it heard me. All right, let's, okay, uh, let's... while we're trying to fix uh, the audio there, I don't know if you heard me. Let's continue to give you some more information. Now, the sixth intervention, we were giving you some of the interventions earlier. The sixth one was the, to the tune of $413 million. Uh, that was on June 12th uh, to further shore up the international value of the Naira. Now, the CBN offered the sum of $100 million to dealers in the wholesale window. The small and medium enterprises, SMEs, got uh, 28 million dollars mm. now the invisible segment was allocated 26 million dollars to meet the needs of those requiring forex for business and personal tax or personal travel allowances school tuition and medicals on the 14th of the same month the cbn injected 418 million dollars into the foreign exchange market this intervention was aimed at pushing for the convergence of various market rates Hmm. Now, the wholesale window got to $100 million. The small and medium enterprises, SMEs window, received uh, $226 million, while the invisible segment comprising business, personal travel allowances, school fees, and medicals received $42 million. Now, after these interventions, the Naira gained seven points on the dollar, dropping to 363 uh, Naira to the dollar from uh, 370 Naira to the dollar. If we have uh, Professor Kenefe back on uh, with us. Uh, my question earlier, uh, could you confirm that you can hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Now, I, I was asking, the, the CBN, well, uh, our Forex reserves are now at $31.22 billion. Uh, dollars. Dollars. And the, there seems to be, you know, some stability in the price of crude oil uh, globally. And the peace in the Niger Delta 
that seems to be giving uh, you know the CBN some level of confidence that it can continue to uh, intervene in the forex market. Uh, do you think that uh, you know where the CBN is uh, relying on is strong enough to hold it? No, it's not strong enough uh, in terms of uh, throwing caution to the wind. It's not strong enough in that respect. But it is strong enough to encourage other players to come in. And they are coming in. You see the results on the Manufacturing uh, uh, Purchasing Managers Index. It's showing an upward trend. You've seen the, in, uh, the, in the, in the import-export window of the, F, of the CBN has actually encouraged $4 billion to, to move in that window over the last three months. So there are positive signs. But the thing is that, can you try and compare our position today and 2008, 2009, when we had $62 billion in foreign reserve and we have $22 billion in excess crude account? We had the muzzle to fight. And you can do anything you liked at that stage. But you can do it now. A lot of that 31 billion you have mentioned are committed. In, uh, they are already committed in uh, guarantees. You can let that float. Now, there is uh, a good, re a reasonable volume of um, uh, trade debt, tr you know, uh, portfolio investments coming in. But not enough of the foreign direct investment to give us that cushion. So, you know, the whole fragility is predicated on the fragile uh, uh, oil price, oil price, uh, cruise price, and then of course, uh, I know we have bought some peace in Niger Delta, but this is not a settled issue completely. So we can't, we can't take those risks right now. We need that space for other players to kick in. The mineral industry is coming up, the, the, the mining, of course, is coming up. And actually, NNPC is going through major shakeup at the moment. You see the acceleration on PIB. You've seen also the minister saying that we would gain $30 billion over the next 10 years from the rejigging of the, of the, uh, of the, of the oil contracts. So there, there is a sign. You can't. It's too early. It's too early to drop our guards. Uh, and and uh, you could have the, the recovery could go uh, overboard. Uh, Professor, let's put you on hold and uh, go for the news update, and then we come back uh, to round off with you on this topic. Professor Ken Ife, yeah. and uh, of course, uh, it's around uh, the interventions by the CBN into the forex market. How far so far has it been a success story? Of course, there were fairs when it just started. Mm -hmm. uh, those fairs are laid now. Uh, Prof, uh, let's uh, uh, throw this in now. Uh, They've been talking about the impact of this, um, you know, forex liquidity uh, on investors and uh, importers window where exchange rates uh, are largely uh, market determined. Uh, place that side by side with the retained multiple uh, forex uh, rates. Well, it is good news, isn't it, that the import export window has generated a lot of activity to the tune of $4 billion over the last three months. Now, we have to approach it with caution. You know, in, there is convergence. Yes, I know we have 305, and then we have 3, uh, 360, 3765, or whatever. But there is convergence on, on that parallel market and all this black market. There is convergence, very, very narrow. In fact, I wanted to send school fees to London, and then I looked at the, the difference. The, there wasn't any difference, the two, three naira. So I said, why spend time here? I have to look at, you know, I have to look at other options. So, but it wasn't, it wouldn't have been the case if I was looking at this a year ago. So there is convergence, but it is a gradual step. I think what I have to say to you is that we need this space. We need the policy space because the, look at government revenue, the, the a fallback position. That is faltering just because our tax base is very low. And then the revenues expected from customs and VAT and tax are low. There is a bit of recovery on the company side because you can see that many companies are beginning to post you know, reasonable profits. So we are now beginning to see what we didn't see last year. So these recoveries are very fragile. And I have to tell you that we have to give it a chance. We now have a plan which all the development partners wanted us to have, which we now have. But we need to give that plan the time to, 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 to develop. Not, not much has come by way of the implementation. Uh, to the extent that you can guarantee that confidence and say, okay, let's be more adventurous on, on the forex regime. We just cannot. We just cannot. We have to allow more time. 
have to understand what it would take to have uh, a, a, a one forex policy where everything is unified. Mm. If you have to take us through the process generally, even though you say it, it has to take some little time, but what would it take really if that has mm. to be implemented? Because if, we, if you travel to South Africa or you travel to any of these countries, the same uh, rate it is in Johannesburg is the same rate in Pretoria, is the same rate in Cape Town and all of that. How, how, what would it take to achieve that in Nigeria? Well, it's, it's, it's a matter of time. It's, uh, I couldn't say it's in a month's time or in six months' time, but much depends on how soon we're able to exert other sources of revenue. There's, there's, like, there's recovery, as you could see, on the export uh, promotion side, the non-oil non export, which melted away two years ago. Uh, there's now a bit of recovery in that area. But look at what is happening in agriculture. That would even give us more confidence because... When we are, you cannot release the grip on, on the 41 items because 1.3 trillion naira, which is what it costs us to import some of those six items, uh, five items, rice, uh, wheat, sugar, and all that, they're under attack and there's massive support from the CBN there. So you can see that we are beginning to recover. And that is how our productive capacity in relation to agriculture will continue to peak and that will bring employment in. So these are all the areas that will bring more forex uh, uh, liquidity. There are other sources, non-oil sources, bringing in more forex liquidity. Now you have the cushion. That is now where you have the cushion to say, okay, let's force a, a, a maximum convergence. Uh, but, but you have to work, you know, for, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. Uh, of course, in our earlier report there by Lara Folayo, there was talk about uh, sharp practices still going on in the multiple forex uh, window. What are the loopholes, really, uh, specifically, that you think should be plugged? Well, I'm not sure about uh, loopholes, to be honest, because we have got the invincibles back, so we can send our school fees now. We can do our, our health... Uh, our health uh, travel and BTA and PTA, the, the money is there. The, some banks are even advertising for you to come and take uh, your, your forex and travel. We've also seen the SME window opened. We've seen the trading, robust trading going on on the futures market and, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the payout. And so that is bringing more stability in the, in the forex regime. We've also seen, as I say, the import and export window and investors. So yet we are gradually returning investor confidence. Mm. And this, this, this confidence is what it requires for the forex, uh, that for the FDI to come mm. in, the foreign direct investment. Yes. So that is slow wasting coming, but it will come. They require, as private sector, they want to see stability in the regime. They want to see that inflation is coming down. They want to see that we are aggressively fighting to support the industry. Remember last year, Late early last year, there was a complete meltdown of about minus 10% in the manufacturing subsector. Now the manufacturing subsector is coming back. And that will give a lot of incentive to the, a lot of uh, hope to foreign investors who want to invest in the manufacturing sector, the FDI. So, so you've got to see all that coming uh, to give you the, 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 the basis for a, a final blow on, on final convergence. Okay. All right, Professor Kenny Fair, macroeconomic policy analyst, thank you very much for talking to us on TVC Breakfast.